Our next tropical system is beginning to form and it looks like it's going to become a hurricane and could be a major threat to the Caribbean islands, especially the Lesser Antilles from St. Martin to the north. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, keeping you posted along the way. Please like this video, let me know in the comment section where you're watching from and it's a good idea to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you live in the islands right now, please especially let me know and we're watching this to make sure it doesn't make any uh, path toward the United States and deeper into October, it does look like uh, the Central America area could begin to give us some development that we'll need to keep an eye on in the southeastern United States. And there's some features around Florida that we're watching this week that could provide for some heavy rain, tropical development or not. So we've got a lot to talk about here, including that threat for uh, the Caribbean islands. So it looks to be from what will be Tropical Storm Jerry. And new today, we now have an invest on this. So we now have some new models. What you're looking at is the Atlantic Basin as a whole. There's a lot of moisture here across Florida. Uh, you know, the models have been uh, really really showing a lot of rain for some areas, then backing off. But there's been some flooding today from that persistent onshore flow from Charleston to Savannah. And parts of Florida have gotten a lot of rain as well. And we're just really kind of juiced up here across the Atlantic Basin with deep out having a thread here. And we've got to watch this closely. This is our Invest 95. It's pretty sloppy like you would expect. But as you can see above me, it's now been highlighted with a high chance for development in the days to come. Let me show you that Invest because now the National Hurricane Center has a high chance for development. It also has from the Caribbean islands north, Lesser Antilles, seeing a pretty good chance for development. And not only that, but they could be grazed with some development here as a tropical storm or maybe even a powerful hurricane. Here's the latest GFS tracks on this possible area of development. Now, this is before it was designated an invest, so we'll get some more fresh tropical data in on this. And you can see it is expected to drop to a hurricane pressure and then make its turn to the north. So relatively low threat to the United States, but we do need to stay dialed in on this for the islands. And here's why. The ship's model, one of those that show a hurricane on approach here uh, toward the Lesser Antilles. I'll zoom back out. You can see it right there. And as we look at some of the potential energy here, it goes up, max wind potential goes up, uh, sea surface temperature goes up. So uh, just about everything to fuel this storm would, would be there. Now we've got early indications from our global models, the European, the UK Met, the GFS, the Canadian, all averaged together showing a general track here and a general turn toward the north. But exactly when does that turn happen will depend on uh, what the impacts may be for the Lesser Antilles. And we're watching this for you from St. Martin to Barbuda, uh, areas toward the north, uh, Puerto Rico, even part of this, the U.S. Virgin Islands. We'll be watching this very closely for you. The good news is Google's DeepMind, which did so well with the last two tropical systems we have, does turn this just in the nick of time. And that's a good thing. And why we need to specifically pay attention to this is the early tropical models that we do have. Here's the 12Z on 95L. This is the very first models we have. Many of those early producing. Now, we don't have all of them yet, but many of them show at least a hurricane, but possibly Cat 2 or Cat 3 down the road, which wouldn't surprise me. It's a very warm area of the Atlantic that it's going to be in. So let's dive in on the models here. Let's start with the European. I'll tell you first off, the European is not real aggressive with this system. It has not been. It shows a regular old low pressure system. You see it barely hanging on right there. It's a little baby uh, low pressure system sitting right there. We'll be watching that closely, but as we move forward here, we'll be looking out for a possible hurricane uh, uh, Jerry forming later this week. Let me type that in here, update my headline. Um there we go. I forgot to update that. So you get it on the fly there. Uh, so Jerry possibly forms later this week. And as we move this model on out, it shows it turning toward the north right there. It doesn't really become anything. But let's look elsewhere. Let's look at the European, what it's trying to tell us in Central America. You got that little area there. Some low pressure from the Pacific can sometimes crop over into the Caribbean. We're going to be watching the Caribbean and the Gulf, especially those last two weeks of October. As the United States begins to cool down, we start to get some cold fronts. Those cold fronts can sometimes sometimes usher up areas of suspicion. Now, the GFS model is a lot more aggressive with this system. Let me show you what happens here. You see already a tropical storm forming as early as Tuesday on this system. And this model uh, really broadens it out into a strong hurricane here on approach to the islands. And yes, it would get right up into it there. 958 would be a Cat 2 or Cat 3. This is why we need to really, really watch this closely for you folks in the Caribbean islands. This could be a big deal for you uh, as it moves toward the north. Uh, Eastern Caribbean. 
man oh man, uh, watching this for possible big impacts from what will be Jerry. This turns to the north and becomes a big, big system. 950, 952, even getting into 940. So this could be a major hurricane. Good thing it's moving away. Now the GFS does pop up little areas of suspicion here across the Caribbean into the Atlantic here, which you would expect for weeks two and three of October. You start getting some cold fronts to come through here, some snow starting to break out across parts of the mountains. Uh, that's all ahead in the next three weeks while we're in the midst of what is still a, a pretty pronounced um, tropical activity time frame, but also the time frame that we begin to get pronounced cold fronts. And folks, I am working on my winter forecast. Got that locked and loaded, ready to go. Just got to build some more graphics for you on that. So I uh, can't wait to share that with you later on this week. Let's look at the GFS closer into the Lesser Antilles as we move on forward here. Look at some rain moving on through. That's a precursor event, as we call it as you could have some rain. Here comes the GFS barreling in here. I don't like the looks of this. That is a big hurricane. I mean, you're talking about some significant swells, some significant outer bands moving through here for you folks in the Eastern Caribbean, uh, and, and really just miles away from some big time hurricane force winds. Thankfully, this GFS keeps the worst of it just north and east of some of these islands in here, and then it moves up toward the north right there. Let's look at impacts. This is the early GFS model. I'll flare it back to some different model runs. Again, you got a precursor event here that gives us about an inch or two of rain through Tuesday, and then comes this main system in here. You see the bulk of that flooding rain, thankfully, on the right side of the system. But some outer bands certainly get in here to some of these islands. We're talking five plus inches of rain here for the Lesser Antilles up through Puerto Rico, probably two inches. But again, we got to watch the track of this. The last run of the GFS has it farther out. And you go back two runs ago, closer in, three runs ago, a little bit out there. So if there's been a trend, the last one has it the closest but thankfully still just offshore with the worst of the wind and the rain. Let's look at the wind potential, and man, oh man, this would be a big impact if it did come through. My, oh my, you don't want to see that. Look how close that is. We're talking about some significant winds here. If I look at my key down here, these are in a knot, I believe. Yeah, no miles per hour. These are miles per hour. We got some pinks and some reds showing up here, 100 to 110 mile per hour winds moving on through uh, just northeast of these islands as they roll on through right there. So that would be the last model run. The last model run is actually a little bit stronger, but it's north and east. That'd be a major Cat 3, but you're talking the difference in some big swells and some gusty winds, but 60, 70, 80 miles offshore, some big time wind and rain. Uh, I mean, this is, this is close. This is very, very close and why we need to stay dialed in on it. So what else is brewing out there in the tropics do we need to watch out for later this week? I'm always preparing you for what's ahead this upcoming week. Well, as we move forward this week, it's all about the Caribbean. Let me turn on the full run. There you go. Uh, so we're looking for this development here heading toward the Caribbean islands. Does it turn? We hope so, but it's going to get very close. Then look at this toward the Caribbean, pulling up toward the north. We need to look out for some development toward the 14th, 15th, 16th time frame. I'm looking for a pronounced cold front to move off toward the east and try to pull up some of that moisture from the south with some energy, some rain, some wind. All of that could lead to some potential impacts down the road, which we need to watch out for. And again, that is a typical time frame that would give us trouble uh, for the Caribbean, for the southeastern United States. But one thing's for sure, we'll be dialed in on it as we see it. But right now, the big impact will be the island hurricane threat. What will likely be Jerry this week, that's going to be the headline. And moving forward day by day, we want to make sure it makes that turn, not only for the islands, but for the United States. And then once we know Jerry is either going to brush up against some of the islands or it turns to the north, our attention will then turn for uh, tropical-wise toward the Caribbean uh, f to see what can form there uh, near Central America. Now, that could be an area that we need to watch, especially because I start, I'm starting to see some fronts, some very progressive fronts, and our first real taste of some cold air coming into the eastern half of the United States, including Florida, will start to cool down. And once we start to get those kind of fronts to come through, you know they start to yank up some activity from the south. So uh, we're about 10 days out from that pattern moving through. I see a really pronounced cold front coming through about the middle of the month, uh, which brings in the first round of 30s to parts of western North Carolina, Tennessee, up through the Midwest, uh, even Atlanta, southbound. We could get into the 40s. Uh, for you folks in Florida, we could be our first bout of some 50s showing up for the panhandle at least. So we're watching all this, but one thing's for sure, it needs to be dialed in on. We need to keep a close watch on it, and you know I'll say dialed in on it. Folks, if you're new to this channel, please like this video, and it's a good opportunity to go ahead and subscribe to this channel and turn on those notifications 
notifications so that whenever I post a new video with an update, you'll be the first to know about it. Folks, I do appreciate you being here. What I like to do at the end of all my videos is uh, answer your questions. So leave me a comment, leave me a question, let me know what town you're representing from right now, and I'll be sure to shout you out for my next video that I'll post tomorrow, and I'll answer your questions right here. So it'll be a good opportunity for us to be able to uh, interact and see what's going down. Hope you have a good day.